My experience with upgrading to all Gen 4 drives, three of them, in my rig, it's been a blessing. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are talking about Gen 4 drives, upgrading all your drives all at once, and getting your workflow to the next level. That was the thought, and um, yeah, it's been great. I can't complain. I can't complain, but I can't complain overall. Overall, I'm super happy I did it. I'm looking forward to the future with more technology updates, especially with this motherboard I have, the Asus Tough Gaming uh, Pro version. Uh, there are some issues, so I'm gonna be reviewing a few of the things to be looking out for, and if you don't have an X570 board, but you have a B550 board, et cetera, et cetera, what you should be expecting with the numbers. So let's really look at the thought process of upgrading and why you should be upgrading, and then what are you gonna see out of this? So in, in essence, the idea here was very simple. I have three drives. One of them is my Windows drive, and then I have a temp drive that I store temporary things, and then, of course, I have my big Google drive. This idea is that I take the workflow from the videos and I move them from the temp drive into Google after I've sorted them out, and then from there, that syncs up. It downloads back to my Synology box. Everything is covered. I don't have any issues, and then I just edit off the Google Drive until I'm done, and then I uh, unsync that folder, and we're off to the races. How does this look? On average, this is what you will find. The uh, local drive has around 700, uh, 600 700 gigabytes free at any given moment. So I do have Windows on here. I do have things occurring in here as well where I have temporary uh, file downloads and stuff like that and other aspects of uh, saving different things that you would need. And then I have a temp drive. Things come into this temp drive. This is usually almost full. I sort through things. I then take that stuff and I throw it into the Google Drive. The Google Drive is the one where I'm working off of everything. Now, the reason why I have this set up in this way is because oftentimes you'll go three, four days without beginning to edit something, but then that adds up. So if you're shooting every day, you, you know, all these videos, all these images, they add up rather quickly and you need to be able to just dump files somewhere. So there are stuff that goes into Google that is unsorted, it starts to upload, and then I'm sorting stuff in the temp drive before I upload it, then resort stuff in the Google Drive and start to edit and then unsync everything. So this is a typical view of how this all fits the narrative. That being said, the speed is great when it comes to the first M.2 slot on the X570 board. This is where the issue comes into play. The lower M.2 slot and the PCIe card all connect to the chipset, and those do run slower. ASUS has not been able to solve this issue for me. They're basically saying, hey, let's RMA this. Um, I'm, uh, I got warranty on the thing. I'm waiting to see what is a better drive. Is there a better drive? People are saying Gigabit doesn't have this issue. Uh, Asus keeps telling me, hey, try this, try that. And if not, RMA it. Then we go through this loop again every time there's an update. So we're getting there. But let me show you what's actually occurring. This would be on the M.2 slot where we're getting the speeds we need to be getting. Now, this is the reality of what we see when we want to have the drive running at its efficient. The M.2 slot is connected to the CPU, so it will run at its peak. Now, the speeds on the lower M.2 slot and the PCI do slow down considerably, almost 2,000 megabytes a second on the sequential write and about 750 on the read. When I was doing all my tests for all the hard drives, I did account for this, um, but um, you know, this is still proven an issue. What we do see, however, uh, not as big as a drop with the randoms, the read and randoms. So um, we are still getting fast speeds where we're hitting almost like on, on transfers, we're, we are getting about 2.5 to 3 uh, gigabytes per second. Now, I did find when I bought one of the drives, it did have an older uh, firmware version. Make sure to uh, update your firmware. It is making an effect on it. And if you're having this issue with the X570 board, ASUS will pretty much blame everybody else except for them, just like every other company. And literally what you want to be doing is looking at this in terms of, all right, am I in need right now? Will this change down the road? Is this a necessity for me for them to be equivalent? In which case, this is something that you really need to um, make sure the board you're getting is covering this. If you have a B550 board or any of the other boards, they're not gonna get these speeds 
um, where they're saying, hey, it's a Gen 4 and it's going to hit like the X570 board and then it doesn't, you are literally going down to the speeds of Gen 3 on the B550 board. So this Gen 4 drive, if you were to get one, you're not going to be hitting the peaks, but you'll be re reaching the top Gen 3 speeds with a Gen 4 drive. And don't forget this gaming mode, you need to have it on. This does make a difference uh, and you will notice it not on all tasks, but in some tasks, tasks where you will see that if you have it on or off. Uh, I'm not sure about gaming as much as what I've seen is uh, just quicker response rate. Overall, this has been for me great. It's like 20 to 30% improvement. My time, energy and money is on a positive here. I'm literally investing, uh, you know, enough money here that I can see the uh, net benefit for me in all those areas. When I'm looking at the work that's coming in, I can now increase it. I don't have any worries about, you know, what if something is going too slow and I'm having issues. It's just been night and day for me. From an investment perspective, for people that are thinking about it, well, we got to look at the budget that you have and then look at the pricing of this and where it's going. Now, if you're living in Canada and you're looking at the idea of how much you can invest in this, this two terabyte is bloody expensive, it, it, you know, 539, but it, it, it's worth it to me. And for me, it was cheaper to purchase. Now, I also had an incident with my last drive, so it was easier to uh, just say, hey, let me just uh, upgrade right now to this. I did save quite a bit of money that way, but I still had to pay for the drive. And the drive was uh, uh, cheaper than this. It was on sale, and it looks like they've increased the price, uh, the original price. Now, this 254 this is where I purchased my, this is my price point. It was around $250 or 245 And you can see that they also have the five gigabytes. Now, I, in previous videos, videos I've talked about this, there's no point in buying the 500 gigabyte. Um, I, I don't see the benefit of it. And you got to check all drives a little bit different, but they'll have a different speed for the 500 gigabytes. So be careful with that and think about that when you're upgrading a Gen 4 drive. But the idea would be if you're buying a 500 gigabyte, you're probably buying two so you can raid those and get uh, super, fast, super fast speeds. Now, if you go over to Micro Center, we are looking at the price point. Like it is 529 here. Um, it, it is at a price point where the two terabyte, you got to look at it in perspective and say to yourself, you know, what's the value for me? And if I go with this two terabyte drive, uh, how does it increase my flow? For me, I have that extra space. Now I can do so much more work because I'm storing so much more and I can play around with way more things. So if I have a 800 gigabyte project, I'm, I, I can still have four or five projects on there on the go. And then I have my temp uh, drive that I can load up another terabyte there. So when we're looking at it and we're saying, hey, it's 199 uh, for the one terabyte, would it be worth it to just go for two terabytes, one terabytes? I mean, if you have only two slots available, then, you know, that's the question you want to be asking yourself. One's going to be your window drive. Do you really want to have 500 gigabytes for your one window drive? I wouldn't advise it. I would always say go for one terabyte for your Windows drive. You never know how that fills up, how the caching is happening, what you're going to need sometimes to just store stuff. So it's always like if you have 500 gigabytes, I just feel like in 2021, it's not enough for your Windows drive. Now, if you're looking at it in terms of I'm going to have a one terabyte and then a two terabyte, terabyte that changes things or 500 gigabytes and a two terabyte because you can move you know and you just make sure it's 100 percent and nothing else goes on the windows drive and that being said i just find that in my scenario that never works out in anybody's computer that i've worked with um it never is a scenario everybody always stores stuff on the c drive and that's that you know all the downloads all this stuff and that's that but the idea here is what is the best possible workflow for you and what's your capabilities with the price point. For me, this extra $75 to just get the one terabyte is the go-to. And, you know, if you can't do this two terabyte, then yes, the uh, two one terabytes would be the go-to for your ability to maintain top speeds with transfers if that's your goal or if you just want to make sure that you maintain the top speeds you can with anything that's being thrown at your system. Now, are all of these Gen 4 drives worth it for everybody? And uh, in my opinion, no, it's not. Um, when we're looking at it in terms of uh, long term, can you always upgrade in a sequence of uh, requirements and needs? So as you get money, you upgrade one drive, upgrade another drive, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And, and I think that should be the best case for everybody. When you see these sales, uh, you're going to see bigger sales, especially on Prime Day. Uh, you're going to see it on the Black Friday, et cetera, et cetera. That would be my 
thing to do if I'm not just going to go invest all this money. See, I'm looking at it as an investment, time, energy, and money. And I'm saying to myself, how much time am I saving? 20 to 30% because this is going faster. Great. Let's go buy it, invest it. Over time, this pays itself for me and the projects I'm doing. However, if I wasn't looking at it in that way and I'm just saying, hey, I don't really need this. It's not going to save me that 20 to 30%. I would still want to upgrade the newer technology will be faster. You might upgrade your 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 rig. You'll have these to go. You're you're, you're good. You know, uh, off we go. I'm gonna buy a new laptop. If that one has Gen 4 within the next year, I have a drive. I can take it out of here until I buy another one, kind of thing. So we're always thinking about that process of next time we need something with something like this. It 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 works for us. Uh, it's it's more of a it's not really a future proof, but it's something that's gonna uh, hold true until the next generation of drives comes out, which could, could be for a while. Um, now, when we're looking at this and we're saying to ourselves, it, overall, with the issues I faced, with everything that I've gone through, would I go back and do this again? Or if I was building an employee a another computer, would I be buying Gen 4 for them? If they're working full time on video editing, yes. If they're working on a whole bunch of different things, probably no. I probably buy one drive for Gen Four, and I either I either put it in for further uh, storage if they're doing a lot of video editing, or it go on their C drive, and that's that. My uh, my thought process is very simple here. Where is your time, energy, money? What's the percentage of efficiency there and improvement in the time, energy, money? So I have a net positive, and that's my thought process here. So if you're thinking about up Grading, that's what you should be going through in your mind before getting an emotional attachment to making a purchase. So then you can just upgrade in, in sequence with the specials that come on so you can get these drives for a lot cheaper. And then you can go invest your money into other things that could be needed right now, like maybe another camera, you know, microphones, lights, you name it. So that's my two cents on this. Leave a comment below. What has been your experience? Gen 4 drives good, bad, have you upgraded all at once? What's your workflow like? Have you found some efficiency there? Improvement in your work pace? Anything that will give some ideas for other people who are in a situation of thinking about upgrading. And of course, like and subscribe.